and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple. Coming to us from Newborn Games and the creators of Demon Ninja, which we'll be getting into. The one and only M Solid. How you doing today, man? Or tonight, I doing, guess. Doing great, and you? I'm doing all right. Oh, just an, just another case of ju of juggling time zone craziness, but that's par for the course yeah, around well. here. Oh, that and wishing for colder weather. But it's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. So with that in mind, I'd like you to walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Okay, very well. So I had uh, what seems to be the proper initiation rights into the role-playing games. Uh, I tried Dungeons & Dragons and someone's grandpa basement. So it was the classic way of stepping into the game. And although it didn't went very well in that first session so many years ago, there was something that, uh, you know, stuck with me. Some of the guys just went on to other things and I lingered around enough to get, to get it to be a lifelong occupation or hobby. Mm-hmm. And I'm guess I'm I'm guessing that you had jumped around between a bunch of different systems over the years. Yeah, well, I started with with the D twenty uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but mm -hmm. then I played other games with other systems, like um, like a you know a va Vampire the Masquerade and uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, and and more uh, less known games like Tribate, which I like, and some other you know more recent games too like Power to Power by the Apocalypse and yeah I know I'm not an I'm not a an erudite but I know a few game systems. Mm -hmm. So now Demon Ninja is is reported of of using the. Drop one, the drop one system, specifically a modified version. You're calling the dojo version. Yeah. Um. How did how did you for, how did you first come across the drop one system, and was was it a case where Demon Ninja was an idea was an idea looking for a system or vice versa? Well, uh, the drop one system was actually developed co. Uh, co-developed by me and a friend back mm -hmm. in uh, 2015 so that was the first version of the game that we used for our first role-playing game that we created and then the system evolved along the years with many people you know playing the system and the feedback that you get many play testings and then when when I start when I started thinking about the foundations for Demon Ninja, it was pretty much a given that I would use our our you know our our own system that we developed the drop one system. It just happens that for the game that Demon Ninja was becoming, when I was trying to design it, it was it needed uh, to be adapted. Demon Ninja had specific uh, needs to. Uh, you know, to give, to be able to offer the game experience, game experience that I was crafting, I needed to make some adaptations to the system that we developed years ago, to the base mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So that's what's called the Dojo version. It's simply the Drop One system, the initial Drop One system from our first role-playing game, Radikai, in uh, 2015. But with the adaptations needed to make the Demon Ninja game experience work, so that's what we chose. I chose to call the the dojo version. Mm -hmm. Now, 
as I now in the are you familiar with the concept of appendix n um not by that name can you explain please oh it's there's various there's various explanations but when it, but whenever it's used in these sort of parlances it's it's a shorthand for a section that's listing um uh, inspirations in, um related me related media that kind of thing Oh, okay. when it comes to deep, when it comes to Demon Ninja, what would be some of the appendix and material outside of um, role playing games? Yeah, so so this uh, this will be a a long answer. I, I hope you have time because uh, Demon Ninja. Actually, when I started developing Demon Ninja, it had nothing to do with Ninja. Um, that's the truth. So this will tie in with the answer uh, to your question. But um, when I started developing... Oh. Hold on a sec. Hold on one moment, folks. StreamYard is app giving us issues. Horses that I, you know, teen, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles also fight Ninja. So yeah. Ninja, are, you know, there's a lot of, you know, old Ninja movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody knows that. Maybe some manga, maybe some, uh, you know, comic books. But uh, that was it. But when I when I was developing this game, I wasn't looking. I wasn't thinking of Ninja because when I started developing this game, what I really wanted to do was to develop the game, develop a game about special forces. You see, mm -hmm. so I wasn't going for Ninja straight from the beginning. Uh, and even in the book, even in the book, it is. You end up state you end up stating that this is more that you're trying to do more of an homage to nineties horror. And hang on a moment. Temporary special forces, mm -hmm. any of the special forces that are, you know, are known across the world. Mm -hmm. So ninja, ninja, ninja were not in the picture in the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it just so happens that uh, you know, uh, around the time that I was designing the game, I came into contact with um, the content of uh, not the original version, of course, but the content of. Uh, a scroll, an ancient scroll, uh, which is which had the bases, the, fun, the foundations for a, a military school of knowledge from old Japan. Mm -hmm. There are several of them actually, but uh, I was new to that, to that kind of material. Uh, what I was, what I n know about old Japan is, uh, you know, essentially culture and martial arts. But I wasn't, uh, in, I wasn't uh, aware that there was also schools of military practices, military knowledges that, you know, beyond martial arts, there was, there was also that. So I came into contact with one of those, one of these uh, ancient scrolls that actually, you know, uh, there's uh, several authors that have uh, some academic thesis on that. And, and I read through all that academic stuff and, uh, I started studying that in depth, and that's that's the time when I think about, you know, what if the special forces were not the contemporary special forces, and maybe not even in the Western special forces, but what if I had to design a game of medieval Japanese special forces? Mm -hmm. about medieval Japanese special forces. That's yeah. when the ninja team starts coming, you know, I started coming close to the, to, 
to the ninja team, mm-hmm. but not, but not ninja in the, you know, in a kung fu sense or in an old ninjas movie sense, like people dressed in black and jumping around. That, that's demon ninja is not about that. Sometimes I, I, I know for sure that sometimes people, you know, think of that when they hear the name demon ninja, or maybe some people might think that it's a game of about martial arts or something like that. But really, that's not really the case. Demon Ninja is a game about, you know, if I had to put it in current parlance, it would be something like um, a game about, you know, special organizations like, you know, like I could say, you know, CIA or KGB or, you know, men in black these kinds of organizations. Yeah. So uh, it's more a game about spies, special agents, like that. But it's not; it doesn't revolve around martial arts that much. Not as much if, as people think. There is, of course, a component of that, but that's not the the that's not the core of the game. Mm-hmm. And so the mention of the sh- uh, shinobi or ninja word, uh, you know, demon ninja has its own lore. Let's say so it doesn't. Uh, it, it doesn't pull that much from the ninja that we know from pop culture. Mm-hmm. But if I have to, if I had to do the appendix, M, uh, you know, if I have to point out some, uh, some in- sources of inspiration, maybe I would say the nineties horror scene around the ninja, uh, around, uh, around ninja, mm-hmm. like uh, Kawa- uh, Yoshiaki Kawajiri uh, um, um, work. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you, you have some, you know, Ninja Wars, um, uh, Ninja Scroll, uh, let's say even Basilisk, or mm-hmm. you know, you have some some several um, several uh, several works that I could say that were, uh, if I have to choose some influence from the the ninja scene, the movie or book ninja scene, I would choose them. Mm-hmm. Although, as I said, the ninja didn't start to be about ninja. So when I brought the ninja team in, I had to, to give it its own lore, its own meaning, because I wasn't looking for the pop culture ninja to, you know, to to populate the game, to 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 give the game its look. So mm-hmm. when you look at Demon Ninja, and people will see when you look at the cover of Demon Ninja, the cover of the book, you don't see the typical ninja that you would expect to see. It's more about is is more like. Like a 007 in medieval Japan. What would the 007 in medieval Japan be? Not mm-hmm. with technology, but with the supernatural, you know, revolving mm-hmm. around the supernatural thing. It's more, uh, I know this is not very clear, but it's uh, what I can uh, think of at a moment to explain the process. Yeah. Especially since, if I'm not, mis- if I'm not mistaken, you're, you, um, you there are there are certain materials that you have that you have that sort of lean in, sort of lean into that and one even with even with the or the demon ninjas as an organization being um being rooted in that line between the natural and supernatural um there's you have you have it separated into di- into um into different clans and that does bring that does bring me to something that i encountered in L- in l5r and and that is establishing a a um, framing device on why dif- on why different clans who usually have their own agendas would um be in a situation where they have to work together which is basically a way of saying he- of of getting um different different player characters of different clans in the same room yeah. um how do you how do you usually um address that particular thing uh through the covenants mm-hmm. um let's say uh, in demon ninja's lore clans are not um are not large organizations those are the covenants mm-hmm. the clan the demon ninja clans or the demon clans are the, as they are called in the book they they are uh, really the cl- clan is a western term um uh, it's not a uh, w- w- if i had to define the demon clans i would choose 
if I had to define them technically, I would choose maybe the term cults uh, because that's what they truly are. They are um, smaller cells of demon ninja that share the same training, the same high technique, and are recruited from the, from the same base of, po of poss possible uh, recruitment targets. So, but they, their agenda, if, if they have more of a inner culture and inner tradition that actually an agenda. Mm -hmm. So the agendas in Demon Ninja, the ninja agendas that are uh, pursued by the covenants, not the clans. The clans are like, uh, let's see, like schools of martial arts. Although the, the, these are not martial arts, martial arts is just a small particle of the clan. The clan has the, the, the demon clans that are more about a dark spirituality of, uh, you know, it's like more uh, like teams, <laughs> teams of ninja. But they 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 don't pursue political agendas. The political agendas of in the, in the shadow war, what is described in the world as the shadow war are pursued by the covenants, by the tree covenants. Mm -hmm. And the covenants, inside each covenant, you have ninja from all demon clans, for every demon clan, you see? So the covenants are the large organizations that pursue that kind of agenda that you are uh, talking about. Mm -hmm. Those those really have an agenda, and, and they don't have an inner culture, and they don't have a, 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 a spirituality of their own. Because they have demon ninja from all demon clans, they 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 employ they they employ demon ninja from from all demon clans. You see, so these uh, I address that through the covenants, not the clans. The clans don't have a political. It's the covenants that you know mobilize the clans for poli political ends. Mm -hmm. When I say political, you know, I say political in the classical sense. Like war is a form of politics too in old Japan. You see, so I'm not. When I say political, I don't mean necessarily only diplomatic. No, I politics mean, by any other means. Yeah, in a broader sense, yes. <laughs> now, given... I'm sorry for any mistake in my part. English is not my mother language, but I'm trying. Okay. The fa the fact that you're trying is all, is all that I ever um, ask from people. Okay, thanks. So, with the now, with that in with that in mind, uh, when it when it comes to when it comes to character creation, as mm -hmm. uh, and I do appreciate the diagrams of, about each part of the character sheet. That's not something that's done as often as I'd like. <laughs> but, yeah, well. but um, since you're since you're doing you're doing a point based affair. And something that I something that I always bring up with point based affairs is the possibility of um, cho of choice paralysis. And what do you mean? You know when when there when you have a when you have a myriad of options, um, there can there can be there can be a bit of a choice paralysis in in someone wanting to make sure that th that um that they don't that they don't end up um pick picking something in the wrong manner and oh. i suppose i though i suppose in your i suppose in your case the it's somewhat mitigated in the fact that un unless i'm misreading things you don't develop points in skills for instance you either have a skill or you don't yeah <laughs> pretty much so um yeah well let's start from the beginning the character creation process in uh drop one system and demon ninja is divided in um, two methods in two parts so in demon ninja you have uh, an element of randomness and an element of uh, decisive choice during the character creation process so when you're training your ninja character, oh, we call training the ninja character, uh, we call the character creation training your ninja character, okay? When you have your character sheet and you're 
creating your character, you know, and then the demon ninja culture, we, we call that training your ninja or demon ninja. When you're doing that, there's some elements that you can choose to allocate the points that you, like you said, you know, you, you choose which points you want to go and which trait. But there's another element that you have to roll to see how much your demon ninja retained from the training times. Uh, and uh, when you, what really you don't choose how many points you want in a skill. That's not how uh, it works. It works like that f for the broader traits called attributes, but not for the skills. Because when you're creating your character, when you're uh, you're assigning skills to your character, we assume that it, we we uh, look at that as you train your demon ninja, and we'll, we're going to see how much you, re you retain, how much you was able to learn, and you roll for that. And once you roll, it's not like a classical you know, the 20 system that, you know, you roll and then you pick and choose where you want to drop your uh, results, your values, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm using correct language, but I think you understand what I mean. So mm -hmm. you roll, you roll and then you, you choose to allocate whatever you rolled to what trade, right? That gives you a high, uh, a higher level of control. Uh, but in Demon Ninja is different. Some parts, yes, some parts it's completely point based. So you pick the points and you put the points exactly where you want your character to excel or to be uh, more developed or more efficient. Mm -hmm. But then in, in, the, in the other part of the character sheet, and there are several like readiness is also rolled for, skills are rolled for. You have to, you, you, you don't uh, allocate, you choose, you choose the skills you want and then you roll for each one of them and it it's it once you roll it's it blocks it stays like that for example mm -hmm. i choose armed combat awareness stealth medicine and uh, uh shokushu jutsu for example and now i'm gonna roll once for each chosen skill and what i roll goes into that skill i don't roll in a separate piece of paper and then pick those results and assign to the skills. No, 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 no. If I'm rolling for empathy, for example, I throw the dice and that's what I start with an empathy. Mm -hmm. Then I roll for awareness and the same happens. What I get is what I start with in awareness. I don't get to pick and throw that result into one another thing. I choose the skill in which I roll, but I don't, I cannot pick the, that result and throw into another trade. Okay, so there's this, this combines, this combined elements of some red, some randomness and some, you know, some agency in the character creation uh, process. Regarding what you said, that is, uh, you, like, you know, the possibility of um, of choice uh, of choice uh, paralysis. Yeah, uh, there's there's definitely that possibility um, because. The, when you Demon Ninja is a very small book, but there's a lot of layers to the book and hidden balances and hidden mechanisms. So you don't you're not very aware of them in the beginning, and so it's it's natural for you to hesitate, right? And uh, and where where to where to invest, you no, know, right? Where to make your character really excel? But keep mm -hmm. in mind, but keep in mind one aspect that is prior to that when you create a character in demon ninja you one one thing you you really have to have and there's no rolling for that and there's no assigning points for that you just you must just decide what you want to be in your ninja team it's called the specialty i don't know if you had the time to go through that mm -hmm. so each demon ninja character in your nin your your ninja team will have a specialty like in the special forces, you understand? Uh, it, will, it will have a specialty, right? That specialty tells you about what his role in the team is, right? It can be a remover, uh, an executioner, it can be a survival, it can be a, a demon hunter. It can have a lot of, sp of specialties. It, it can choose one from a lot of specialties. But once you choose your specialty, it gives you a sense of direction that you bring to you 
that you bring with you when you're when the time comes to assign a few points to your character sheet because the specialty is not just lore it gives you something that you can do that no none other than you can do in your ninja team mm -hmm. regardless of what your skills are the specialty is what defines the your character's role and for example it's easier to it's easier to explain by examples a demon hunter can sense the presence of demons around him. Okay, he can mm -hmm. use, he, yeah. So he can he can pump his demon key to his brain, and he can sense the presence of demons around him. And only a demon hunter ninja can do that. It doesn't matter, you know. You can you can have another demon ninja that can have all the skills in the world, but if he's not a demon hunter. He cannot sense the presence of a demon on the other side of a wall. Do you understand what I'm, yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and the same with and the same with the other uh, with the other uh, uh, specialties, uh, like occultist or like a, rem a remover. Which a remover has a specific term in Demon Ninja. We can talk about that later. But the when you the first with well, the first things you choose when you're creating your character is not skills you, that's not the start of it you choose your name you choose your clan and you choose your specialty by the in that order so that that gives you a sense a very se strong sense of direction because once once you know that your character is a demon hunter you look at your character sheet with a strong sense of direction direction once you know your character is like a special ninja surgeon which is what a remover really is then you look at your character sheet with a clear sense of direction. When you see the skill medicine, you immediately empathize with that choice, right? Because you're a cert. Do you, you understand? Yeah. So these previous choices guide you in a very strong sense. So when you get to the non-random part, because there's that random part that I told you about, when you get to the the non-random part of character creation, you all you have you already have a pretty good idea of of what you what what your character does in the in the team. Mm -hmm. So so you're looking for skills to to support that, right? If he fights demons, you're looking for skills to support. If he's a surgeon, you're looking for skills to support. You, you see, so this this makes it. Um, easier i hope <laughs> to uh to uh get around the uh possible ch choice paralysis yeah <clears throat> now speaking of that i'd like to shift into the drop one system in in and of itself yeah now unless i'm unless i'm mistaken the co the the core mechanic is d is um d6 based um in a in a um ro in a roll high kind of kind of setup so yeah. what made you go with a d6 based approach was it just ease of use was it bell curve or was it something in the middle uh yeah so um it was a mix of factors i guess um First, I um, I I grew uh, uh, a bit un, un, uh, I grew a bit tired of the D twenty system. I uh, was looking for something different, and uh, also um, the, the the use of D six. You know, probably okay for people who, who role play a lot, or you know that have been role playing for a long time. They have all kinds of dice around right so because you know if they're they, they role play a lot it, it's probable that they have a lot of dice so they can find any dice that they need for any system right but for people who don't role play a lot and are just starting it's easier for them to have dice six around the house <laughs> than d20 d4 d8 d10 you see mm -hmm. so it's it's and on one hand, is more user friendly for newcomers. On the on the other hand, the 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 fact that we use uh, 
uh, this particular, not that that six on on its own, but uh, the particular combination that we use. That you, right, you throw three six-sided dice and discard one of them. Mm -hmm. um, this is our uh, proprietary mechanism, so we can use it for our games um, without having to um, uh, license uh, other systems. But because uh, you know systems. The, the more known systems are the more they belong to somebody so we can not just use any system that we want right so uh, the drop one system is our own so we can use it uh, with no problem and this is also a factor uh, and on the other hand the it turned out to be a fun way to roll dice too uh, because there's a lot you know you said it's uh, I and roll yeah mm -hmm. but uh, in the, uh, for example, uh, before yesterday in the last game session that I have, uh, something that happens uh, quite a few times happened again, which uh, a player chose to discard his best dice in order to get the worst possible result. And, and he did so wisely because he needed to fail that role. <laughs> he, needed, he was desperate to fail that role, not to succeed because he was infected and he was now turning against the team. So he discarded the, his best dice on that roll, and, and it allows for that too. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you don't, you don't always want to roll high in Demon Ninja. It depends on the situation. Generally, yes, but there's a lot of things that can happen during the game that you really don't want to succeed in some, some of the stuff that uh, happens. And Demon Ninja allow, uh, and the, the uh, sorry, the drop one system allows you some control over that. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that's it. Now, with that, with that in, with that in mind, when it comes, when it comes to, um, com when it comes to thing things like combat, it looks. Would it be fair of me to say that you that Demon Ninja is a game that leans more into theater of the mind than um, grid combat. Not really, I think. It, it, it has a lot of combat, unfortunately, more than I would like. <laughs> well, but... it's, it's, it's not an issue of how, how much or, or how little, but rather the, rather the approach. Um, theater of the mind is, is exactly what it sounds like as far as how as far as combat, but um, grid combat is obviously when you're breaking out the minis and the like. Yeah, so um, I was actually, I before uh, I, a few hours ago, I was finishing the recording of a video with minis uh, to ex exemplify the combat mechanics of Demon Ninja. We always play with minis, actually, mm -hmm. uh, because the characters have a movement uh, speed and uh, they have a carrying capacity and they they they, they have all it's they have a lot actually demon ninja is better to to uh, to um to play with minis because of things like hijutsu and some skills that are easier to envision if you have a scale and minis to walk around i know it doesn't sound like that but once it doesn't read like that you read through and you think you know, this is more like a sandbox game or more a more narrative game, right? And not really a game of tactical combat. Is that what you mean? I, I mean, not necessarily. You don't. You can have. You can have a narrative leaning, but also have tactical combat in RPGs. Yeah. Um, it well, is. Uh... But I didn't. I didn't see a whole lot of material on, on on example um, spacing, for instance. You know. Oh, I see. I understand. Yeah. Well, um, mm, what I can say is this: Demon Ninja has a lot of details, and actually, <laughs> maybe in a future edition we will organize the details in another way, so you don't miss the details when you're going through the book because Demon Ninja has a lot of details. Um, for example. Uh, when you come into the range, into a certain range with a host, you suffer that attack. Uh, the, not the attack of the host, but attack of the tentacle. So, 
for example, when you when you retreat, when you remove yourself from a combat scene more than 50 feet, that's an automatic retreat. And to continue combat, they have to do a chase. And chase is a game within a game. Chase, a chase, an action chase is a, a game within a game in Demon Ninja. It's a separate system that you have to engage in now that you're chasing or being chased. You can't just keep combating like normal. No, it has a separate system. So you see, these are all examples that has, have to do with space and move, movement. Uh, hijutsu also is like that. If you move more, if you can make a hijutsu jump for more than 50 feet, then you automatically retreat. And uh, you have ambush and counter ambush, which is also very uh, a very tactical game because you can respond with counter ambush once you once you succeed in in a chase uh, and in evasion. So it, it's simply it's very dispersed in a book, and uh, that's why we will um, present it in visual form. So. Uh, people can see for themselves, right? You can evaluate for yourself. We will make a video with minis of, of an ongoing Demon Ninja session. Uh, but I would say yes, it's not, it's not, it's not, um, Demon Ninja is not um, like a dungeon crawl uh, type of game or uh, like a Dungeons and Dragons type of game. No, Demon Ninja is not that. Mm -hmm. Not at all. If, in, if example, anything, I'm reminded more of World of Darkness. Looking at looking at some yeah, of the things here. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure, I understand that. Yeah, um, maybe uh, that and Legend of the Five Rings were two of the things that cropped mm. that cropped up in my mind as I was going th as I was going through the document. Mm -hmm. uh, it is po it is possible that I might be reading too much too much into the um, latter. But with no, I think you're. I think you're. I think you're right in many aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just that uh, we don't want the Maninja to be another book that you buy and you never get to play mm -hmm. because you don't understand, the, you know, the system or or it just you know is you have trouble implementing stuff. That's not what we want. So we will try to. We are setting up a channel where we will try to go to offer video resources and visual resources so that you can really understand how the experience works, how, how that works uh, together, how things interact, how, how the things that you read in the book interact in terms of combats. Um, Given uh, that, do you, do, you plan on, do you plan on putting out a quick start in the future? In the future, well, mm, uh, I think we, if we didn't do the, these these video collections that we will put out, yes. But since we will offer the, I think the the resource that we will offer, the videos that we will offer are much better than a quick start, um, because in a quick start as is a great tool for you know for initiating to, into the game, but it also it also has a problem because a quick start generally the need to simplify also takes something away from what the game is supposed to look like i know i don't know if you understand what i'm saying uh, if i'm being clear uh, it, it's a great tool to initiate but also it, it's an element of it can be oversimplification you see it uh, um of the game when i and i have to I, if i have to make a 10 to 15 pages quick start it's hard in manage because there's a lot of interactions so we chose another way to show you um, uh, how the game works together, how the things in the book work together in combat. And I think, I personally think it's better than a quick start in a certain sense. Hmm. I gotcha. Now, with that in, with that in, with that in mind, one of the uh, one of the other ma major things I did wa I did want to a I did want to uh, ask about ask about is the is um in regard is in regard to advancements since one of the one of the things you've you talked you talked about in some of the material you sent is the idea of meta mechanics 
Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're being bombarded with these uh, questions about meta mechanics. Yes. I don't. You, I course. don't usually throw around terms like met, like meta, like meta narrative, or yeah. or or meta currency, or the like. I f I find a lot of that to be noise. But mm -hmm. since that was specifically brought up in the material that was that was sent, I felt it apropos to inquire on it. Sure. Uh, you want me to elaborate on it generally, or you have a specific question? Um. I think it's I think it's more of a question of um, philosophy Wait. where this where this concept of meta mechanics in in terms of demon ninja came to be. Yeah. Okay. So here it goes. <laughs> uh, um, uh, listen, uh, meta mechanics, as far as I know, uh, as far as I know, because I don't know when everything, uh, not even close to everything about. You know, role playing games. Role playing games in a, is an expanding industry. There's also there's always, you know, role playing games. New role playing games coming out. So I don't pretend to know uh, what I don't know or know everything. But as far as I know, meta mechanics is a new concept. As far as I know, personally, okay. So as a new concept, <laughs> uh, of course. Ev any, anyone trying to create something new can make mistakes, right? But we, I ask you to um, be patient with this uh, so that I can uh, try to explain the basis of, of what it is. Uh, the character, there's character advancement that you were referring to, which is accomplished to experience points, right? To earning experience points. This seems to be the main mechanism of most role-playing games, right? Not all of them, but um, most, right? I think mm -hmm. we can agree about that. Even though in Demon Ninja, there's two kind of experience, right? Personal or individual and collective, right? In Demon Ninja, there's two, two, two types of experience points, not one. But the major, the, the general concept of earning experience points uh, and, and redeeming them or trading them for more traits seems to define what is character advancement, right? Mm -hmm. And there's that in Demon Ninja 2, okay? So uh, the, with the specifications of you, you can earn collective, the group can earn collective experience points, or each individual member can earn exper per personal experience points. And when it comes to personal experience points, he earns per personal experience points in his own way. So two characters from two demon clans will earn personal experience, personal points in his own, in their own way, not the same way. When it comes to collective, everybody earns the same. But when it comes to individual, each character learns in his, a specific way. But uh, there's also in De Demon Ninja, the book, the Demon Ninja book, not only has what you need to start playing Demon Ninja. But it also opens you the door, opens the door for you if, for a community project that we have around the game. Um, this this is where I need you to be a little bit patient because I know this is a strange, a weird uh, concept. Uh, but I'll try to explain. So, uh, meta me meta mechanics are. A con meta mechanics is a concept that allows something that to jump from your character to you as a person. <laughs> this is this is a basic way that I could start this conversation. Okay, so in most in, in most uh, games, at least most of the games that I play, any role playing game that I role play, you have your character right. And you role play your character in the game, and then maybe your character dies or doesn't die, but that's it, right? That's your character. But uh, meta mechanics uh, works like this: 
it's a, it's kind of a tradition. It's uh, structured around the old martial arts tradition of you know of master and disciple. You know of passing knowledge um, mm-hmm. in, in like a martial way of passing knowledge. Right. That that's the structure behind the concept. But the form that the concept assumes is uh, takes on is uh, this. What the basic we we haven't talked about darkness yet during this conversation. So I have to uh, touch on that before explaining Matthew Cass or else people won't understand. The The main objective of role playing in Demon Ninja is not just earning experience points. Why? Because there's essentially three ways that you can lose your character in Demon Ninja. Not one. You can die from damage, right? combat damage or any form of mm-hmm. any form of damage not necessarily combat but any form of damage right poison or whatever but you can also lose your character to infection by a kisei butsu <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we we haven't talked about that but it's another way of die of losing your character and there's mm-hmm. a third way of losing your character which is the most important of them all which is losing your character to darkness demon ninja is a game of character degeneration Right. So whenever your character uses his powers, his high technique, his his, um, ninja techniques, he adds points of darkness to his character sheet. You see, there's a dilemma. Mm -hmm. You need to use your powers to get you get you through the game, get you through the obstacles, get you through the challenges. Yes, that's every role playing game is like that. You use your powers to get you through the game. Yes. But in Demon Ninja, because your powers come from the same dark darkness that you have to fight in the game, the re- their remote origin is the same. Because every character is kind of a half demon inside, inside, not physically. Mm-hmm. When you use your powers, you degenerate, you gain points of darkness, and this creates a very, very difficult dilemma, a very difficult thing to juggle. What this is the most difficult and more exciting, in a sense, I think, experience of. Demon Ninja, because un, uh, and, and like the other games where you, where you, where you just fight with all you have, right, against the enemies or against the targets or whatever. In Demon Ninja, when you do that, if you do that, if you you know throw throw the kitchen sink at everything, you lose your character in a few in a few game sessions, <laughs> very quickly, because the points of darkness will pile up on your character sheet, mm-hmm. and even more. And this, this, I will explain meta mechanics uh, after this, but I need to go through this, right? Or else it won't make sense. So, and in losing your character to darkness, meaning having more points of darkness that that your character can take, losing your character to darkness, it's not just dying. And uh, it's not just the death of your character. If your character just died, you just make another character, right? But in Demon Ninja, is not like that. When you lose your character to darkness, you don't, your character doesn't die. What, what actually happens is that he morphs, he turns into the apex antagonist of the game, which is an Oni. Mm-hmm. Uh, and an Oni in Demon Ninja, since Demon Ninja has its own lore, it's dangerous to uh, assume that an Oni will be the same as Lord of the Fire, L5R, or uh, other games. It's not like that. And Demon Ninja only are very powerful, yes, but they are essentially doppelgangers. They are face collectors. So when your character um, surpasses the number of points of darkness that he could take, that he, his psyche could accumulate, he turns into the apex antagonist of the game, but he can turn silently, right? The only can assume his own visage, his own face immediately, so that nobody understands what just happened. And this Apex antagonists, very few ninja teams can take on this antagonist. Maybe none of them can. Uh, only more very, very advanced ninja teams could take, an, take on an Oni. So this might, might well mean the death of the entire ninja team. So imagine, imagine a game where when you use your powers, you gain darkness. And if you gain too much darkness, you turn into an apex antagonist that can destroy the, the entire, all can kill all characters, destroy the entire team. Mm-hmm. You see, so it's a strong dilemma. 
to juggle, right? It's not easy. Because if you don't use your powers, then you, then you probably can overcome the challenges, right? You can't fight effectively. You can't overcome the challenges of the game. But if you decide to do that, well, but then you're degenerating your character and turning into a ticking time bomb, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's how this uh, ends up in meta mechanics. This is the main experience of Demon Ninja. The main experience of Demon Ninja is not just fighting monsters. It's way beyond that. You're, in a certain sense, you're a monster yourself. You just have control over it. You see? <laughs> but if you lose that control, you become a total monster. And, and then there's really a problem for everybody, not just a problem for your character. No, you put the entire team in risk. And this psychologically changes everything at the game table. Psychologically, you understand? Mm -hmm. Because then the other players have to help you control you yourself. And you have to help them in the same way. Because they know if any of them should lose this control, this measure of control, then they're all marked for, for destruction. You, you see? So this creates a very tight sense of unity around this concept of never letting darkness win or win or take over a character. Because, you, you see, you need darkness. You need your dark powers. But you have to keep them under control. You have to do things that allow you to lower your darkness rank. So it never goes above what would destroy everything, right? Mm -hmm. So here, here in, now enter meta mechanics. What is meta mechanics? Meta mechanics is a way to recognize and appreciate when a character can do what is a most prolific and a most impressive and extraordinary feat of <clears throat> going through 10, uh, 10 full Demon Ninja game sessions and not only surviving, but lowering, lowering his darkness to zero. Because all characters start with darkness. It's impossible not to start with darkness, going through character creation, right? And depending on your character and depending on your choices during character creation, your darkness can be higher or lower, right? But you will have darkness. You don't get to start at zero. So the descent, the degeneration is very quick if you start using your powers left and right, right? So when a character can not only survive, accomplish the mission, accomplish the missions, the several missions that he gets, and present a darkness level of zero, lowering his dark, not only not gaining more darkness, but lowering his darkness to zero. At the end of 10 game sessions, we call these people, these, not, the, not their characters, but they themselves, the players, we call them Demon Ninja Pilgrims. We consider that their pilgrimage through the world of dark world of Demon Ninja. Oh. And when that happens, if he, if he, uh, accomplishes that feat uh, in, uh, and his game master is a pilgrim himself, meaning the game master all also accomplished that feat. You, you follow? Are you? Yeah. Am I, am I being, uh, um, yeah. Am I explaining things correctly? Okay. If he accomplishes that feat under a game master that is also a pilgrim, he also suffered through that. He also could, could accomplish the feat like that then we have a community project around the game where we, we, we induct him into the lineage of pilgrims where his game master came from. And now he can do the same for others. Not only that, but when you're a demon ninja pilgrim and you're inducted in our, one of our nine, there are, there are nine lineages. <laughs> when you're inducted in, into, you are inducted in, into one of our official lineage tree, of pilgrims from that lineage, you gain the lineage's kun. Is it is this too much information, or can I continue? I mean, no. this is. A... Don't worry about information overload. This is <laughs> information is part of the stock and trade hit in my temple. Oh, okay. I just feel like I'm I'm piling up too much too much information. But okay, once he does that under a game under a pilgrim game master, 
the Pilgrim Game Master makes contact with Disciple Studios. We check that, we verify that, and then we induct them ceremonially, <laughs> induct them into one hour, one of, into the lineage of his P Game Master. And he, is, he cannot be a Game Master himself. He, he, could, he can always be a Game Master, regardless of being a Pilgrim or not. But now he has the Kun of the lineage. What is the Kun of the lineage? Once you're a Demon Ninja Pilgrim, once you survive for 10 game sessions, which we call scars, once you, once you collect your 10 scars from a Demon Ninja uh, Pilgrim Game Master, and you are inducted as a Pilgrim yourself, you now have the Kun of his lineage. What is, what is the Kun? Each lineage has a, its own Kun. The Kun is like a bonus, like a, like a, a, bu like a buff, a buffer that you give all your ninja companions. For example, if I become, well, I'm not the best example, I am, but uh, if someone becomes a Demon Ninja Pilgrim in the Kokoro lineage, which is mine, it's, uh, it's my lineage. It means that from now on, and it doesn't matter what character you are role playing, your character can die, or you can just get tired of playing with that character and create another. You can play, even if it's online or physically, you know. But every time you sit for a Demon Ninja game session as a Demon Ninja Pilgrim of a certain lineage, and you can go on our website and check if he is really inducted into our lineage, we will have the lineages available, right? So that you everybody can check at any time who is who. Once you sit, once you sit for a Demon Ninja game session, all your companions gain plus one experience points at the end of the game session because that's the Kun of, of Kokoro lineage. They, mm -hmm. you know. He, not this character, but he as, he as a player brings that bonus with him every time he role plays, every time he uh, sits for a Demon Ninja game. Okay? All right. So it's a weird concept, I understand, but it's like, I think it's best presented and best looked at as a community project around Demon Ninja, right? We try to create a culture around this very difficult act of juggling the darkness mm -hmm. once um once you try demon ninja and you try to do that i think it will be immediately clear for you the problem you have in in your hands because once you try to do something in the game with your techniques well then the darkness points and you can't resist it it's automatic you just gain the point and that's it when you use your techniques right you can't oppose that you can you know resist that in some fashion no once you evoke that darkness on you to to mobilize your ninja techniques then you gain darkness mm -hmm. so you will see the problem that that poses it's a very complex problem in combat and outside combat because your most valuable assets are contingent or gaining darkness right the use of that is is hindered by this dilemma so you have to that's why i was telling you that Demon Ninja has a lot of factors, right? A lot of interactions. Right before drawing your katana and using a technique, you have to think wisely about what you are going to do here. Because, mm -hmm. because you know what will happen, right? So, and, 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 and obviously the players, sometimes the players have, you know, some arguments about that, right? Because, because darkness brings other things. If you have too much darkness, you... Uh, you bring demons to the party because demons demons can uh, locate full full blown demons can locate demon ninjas in the in proportion to the darkness that they have. So if a, let's for example, if one of the characters in your group has a lot of darkness, and you guys know about that, right? Because you're seeing the darkness piling up on his character sheet more and more and more, right? If he has a lot of darkness it's certain that you will face demon encounters because they will be drawn to him. You understand? Because he has a lot of darkness. Because demons and demon ninja, their primary, primary, ob primary obje objective is not killing the characters. That can happen, but that's not their primary objective. Their primary objective is make them use their techniques and turn them into full-blown demons as well. You know, make them pass to their side. 
You see? So everything ties in for this experience of juggling darkness and your powers. And this is what meta mechanics is about. Those that prove at the game table that they can that they could accomplish this feat, they are officially recognized by the disciple studios as such and gain a bonus themselves that they will carry for the rest of their lives. No many how no matter how many characters they play. Because now they are pilgrims. They no longer create characters. They reincarnate in each of their characters, but their coon is eternal. Yeah. Now, I know that the Kickstarter is 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 um in the works. What what would you say is the release window for that for that Kickstarter and how long do you see it going? Well, uh uh yeah. Uh, guys at Newborn Games, the Newborn Games is helping us a lot with this. Uh, we have to, you know, thank them publicly for this. Uh, it's a complex campaign because it has these aspects of meta mechanics and such. Uh, it's coming in uh, February 15th and it will be up for 30 days. Mm -hmm. So that will be the window for uh, anyone that fancies this kind of stuff, that likes this stuff and would like to check in and oh. uh, back something they will have 30 days to do it and uh, i can say what i can say about the campaign is that there will be some surprises all right i think it will i think it will be a fun campaign i think there will be something to laugh about too it will be a fun campaign and there will be certainly be some surprises along the way so if you guys can uh, drop by if you see something you like it will be an honor to have your yeah. Your backing, and I will certainly keep an eye on how things develop. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness that happens here. Well, and... it's uh, my pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, it was great to be able to talk about the Maninja a little. And mm -hmm. uh, and I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As Thank I often you, say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll sure do. Thank you, sir. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>